mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our first reading from Acts, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we pray by your Spirit's power, open my, our hearts, open our minds, open our souls to the power of your word and fill us with your Spirit that we may receive and take to heart this word. And that the word might work in us to remind us of your love for each and every soul, every soul that walks the planet, every soul that is someone for whom Jesus died. Help us to see everyone that way, that we might know and recognize your love is absolutely universal for all people. In your name, amen. You may be seated. What is the oddest, weirdest, or strangest thing you have ever eaten? The oddest, weirdest, or strangest thing that you have ever eaten? Say what? Crocodiles. Alligator. Squid. Okay. Alligator. Snails. Escargot. What? <laughs> Ludafisk. <laughs> we got my, my father-in-law before he passed a, a t-shirt that said, Ludafisk, the fish that transcends all human understanding. <laughs> um, so I, I want you to think about that as, as we get into this reading so there's a context. Um, you know, for me, probably the strangest thing that I've ever eaten might be the alligator I had when I went to a youth gathering in uh, New Orleans. But now that I think about it, it was probably beef tongue. My, my mom, when they got a beef, they, she would cook everything. And um, my dad loved pickled tongue. And, and for me, I just can't bite on something somebody's been licking with. <laughs> So, um, I, there's a, a show on the Travel Channel um, called Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern, and so he goes around and eats all these really strange things, and if you look at the very bottom of the screen, that red bowl there is a bowl of grubs, which I saw them, you know, roast over a fire, and he ate them, and... <laughs> so, the reason I want to say this is we look at the passage of Scripture, I want you to hear what comes before it. Because what comes before it gives us the context of what happened with Peter. So in Acts chapter 10, earlier on, verses 9 to 16, the next day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat, but they were, while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance. And saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. So, Peter sees this, and as a good Jew, there were certain animals' foods that were considered unclean. Peter, being a good Jew, never ate any of those. But now, God is telling him, you know, here are all these animals, ride Peter, kill and eat. And he's like, wait a minute, I've been a good Jew, I'm not going to do that. But God says to him three different times, 
don't call anything that I've made common or unclean. Now Peter's thinking, well, what does this mean? You know, I need to start looking around for you know, various animals to eat. What's God trying to tell me here? But then he gets a message from a, a guy by the name of Cornelius to come and visit. And here's Peter's response to them. And Peter said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked, then why you sent for me? So Peter starts to understand it. Because God wasn't talking about the animals. God was talking about people. And they were so accustomed to being separate from everyone, so accustomed to being distinguished from everyone, and not associating with anyone who was unclean, Therefore, they became rather prejudiced. Think about what it's been like during COVID. Walk down a grocery aisle and see how far that person coming toward you gets over to the side. Right? I want you to think about that because that's the world in which we're living in. But there's lots of prejudice in our world today as well. And all last summer, we heard about Black Lives Matter. We heard about Blue Lives Matter. We're hearing about Asian Lives Matter. So I'm going to ask you, in God's eyes, which lives matter? All. all of them, exactly. All lives matter. And all lives matter from conception to natural death. And that's what we have to recognize, especially as Christians. Because while the whole Black Lives Matter thing was going on and, um, and Asian Lives Matter, you know, Christians are out there trying to say, wait a minute, all lives matter, and they were shouted down. They were shouted down because it didn't fit the narrative they wanted to be heard. But what we need to hear is that all lives matter to God. All lives matter to receive the message of the gospel. All lives matter to be welcomed by faith into God's kingdom. So if you go on to the, uh, back to the scripture reading, Ben, and I want to start at that first verse. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. To the point that Peter's making and understands is the message of the gospel, the message of God, the message of Jesus Christ is for absolutely everyone. Now, we can think about foods that we like and foods that we'd rather not try. We can think about people that we like and people that we're afraid to talk to. You know what I mean? Okay? You know, you see somebody coming toward you that has a, a load of tattoos and piercings, you might be a little apprehensive to talk to them. But they are just as much of a human being as any one of us, just different. You know, like Alex showed with the, the various kinds of string. Some had one knot, some had two, some had none. All of us are different. Every one of us is unique, but each and every one of us is loved by God, valued by God, and needs what God came to bring. So as we go further in this, notice what it says, verse 36. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace... Next page, through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
And we are all witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. So he's reminding people, because at that time, it wasn't like something happened and nobody heard about it. Because everyone heard about this. Everyone heard about what had happened in Jerusalem. Everyone heard about Jesus' death on the cross. Everyone heard. Didn't maybe understand, but everyone heard about it. But the point of all of this is that that suffering, they put him to death by, uh, by hanging him on a tree in verse 40, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. See, that message is the message each and every one of us needs to hear. That's the message of our salvation. That's the message of our eternal life. That is the message that matters. But if we're witnesses, what does that mean we need to do? Tell. Tell. Right? And if we're afraid to talk, we're afraid to speak, we're afraid to share, we're not really a witness. And that's tough, especially when we're maybe shy or nervous or apprehensive about the people around us, even more so, so now with COVID, where people are afraid to approach anybody or get near anybody or even greet anybody because we're all afraid of the virus. Go on to the next page, Ben. Verse 43 says, To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. You see, God isn't making any distinctions. He's not looking at what nation they're from. He's not looking at what their skin color is. He's not looking at what language they speak. He's not looking at anything about them as an individual. God is looking at each and every soul as someone that Jesus died for. And not only someone that Jesus died for, but somebody that Jesus rose for. I redeemed all these people, and I want them all to know this message is for everyone. This message of the gospel is for all mankind. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., we probably all have heard the I have a dream speech. And all too frequently, we end it with I have a dream. And we forget the rest of the quote. But the rest of the quote is more important than the I have a dream part. Ben, if you would. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. If you know anything about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you know that he was a minister. So his understanding of what that character means is paramount to the quote. Characters has everything to do with what we become through faith in Jesus Christ. Our character without Jesus is corrupt. Our character without Jesus is polluted. Our character without Jesus is sinful, evil, and bitter. But our character with Jesus becomes what? cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and starts reflecting the nature of Jesus, where in our scripture readings, we've heard, love one another. That's what he's calling us to. And we can only do that as our character is changed by faith in Christ. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. understood that. And that's why he said what he said. But we have to understand the quote in context. The context of faith in Jesus Christ makes all the difference. We heard it in our epistle reading today. In our epistle reading, Ben, if you could go to the epistle reading for me. In the epistle reading, um, jump down to about verse 7 or 8. Oh, 
too far. Look at verse 5. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? See, that's what changes our character. The character that we have as Christians is a character that takes a message out into the world. And irregardless of what we see with our eyes, irregardless of what our thoughts tell us, everyone needs to hear the gospel message. And so we put aside our prejudice. We put aside our discrimination. We put aside our partiality. And we listen to both what Peter says and what Jesus himself says. For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world. And that's the distinctive difference. He didn't wait for someone to step up and say, okay, just this race, just this nation. But Jesus said, for God so loved the world. And may we also, by our faith, by our character, and by our witness. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit being abide with us all. Amen.